Some of the things left behind by our ancient ancestors are mystifying. When we say they're mystifying, we don't just mean to us. They're also mystifying to the archaeologists who find them and the scientists who study them. We've got some wonderfully weird archaeological discoveries to show you in this video, and we're going to start right now. Let's start with a beautiful piece of jewelry, specifically an 11th century earring. It was discovered by an amateur metal detectorist working in a field close to Bovling, West Jutland in December 2021, and is believed to be the first discovery of its kind in Scandinavia. It's a cloison enamel earring, and is one of only 12 that have ever been found in the world. The earring is fashioned in the shape of a crescent, backed by a gold plate, and then framed in more gold around the purple, green, and blue enamel. A gold thread has been used on the enamel to create the outline of two birds next to a tree. It's likely that the tree is the metaphorical tree of life, known as Yggdrasil in Norse mythology. But this isn't a Norse piece. It's more likely that it was made in Egypt and made its way to West Jutland through either trade or plunder. The plunder explanation is made less likely by the fact there are no known Viking settlements in this part of Scandinavia, but the idea of someone here trading for it is just as unlikely. Historians are fairly sure that an earring of this quality could only have belonged to someone with royal blood. We associate crucifixion with the ancient Romans, and more specifically, with the fate of Jesus Christ. It's harder to imagine crucifixions being carried out in the British Isles, but in December 2021, archaeologists in Cambridgeshire, England, discovered the first direct physical evidence of the execution method taking place there. At a site earmarked for a new housing development, the team found a 1,900-year-old skeleton with a nail driven through its heel bone. The skeleton is that of a man aged between 25 and 35, who was found buried with his arms crossed over his chest. Discoveries like this are rare, because the victims of crucifixion rarely received proper burials. This particular example is even rarer, because, contrary to what many people believe, crucifixion was usually carried out using ropes instead of nails because it was easier. In fact, it's so rare that this is the first recorded hard evidence of crucifixion in Northern Europe and only the fourth in the entire world. It's thought that the Romans used crucifixion as an execution method only for slaves, anti-Roman rebels, and those of the lower classes during their occupation of Britain. So it's fair to assume that this unfortunate man came from one of those groups. If someone has the gift of gab, meaning that they're a gifted and persuasive speaker, we might say that they have a silver tongue. Apparently, the ancient Egyptians sometimes went further with that metaphor and made it literal. In December 2021, a trio of Egyptian mummies with gold tongues were discovered inside a Greco-Roman tomb in Oxyrhynchus, Egypt. The limestone tomb had been undisturbed since the time of the 26th dynasty 2,500 years ago. Two of the mummies are little more than skeletons, but the third is in such good condition that it still has hair and all of its soft tissues attached. In all three cases, there's a tongue-shaped gold foil leaf where the tongue should be. The Egyptians believed that the dead needed to be able to negotiate their way into the afterlife after they passed away and so they'd have to be able to speak fluently and persuasively. Perhaps this strange burial practice was a way of helping to ensure that their dead loved ones would be able to do so. A similar burial was found elsewhere in Egypt in February 2021, but other than that, it's a very rare discovery, and we're not totally sure of its meaning. German archaeologists spent a good portion of 2014 digging at a site called Keramikos in Athens, Greece, and were rewarded for their efforts with the discovery of a piece of a classic-era funerary stele. The discovery was made not far from a section of the archaeological park known as the Sacred Gate, suggesting that this was a very important burial. As there's little more than a tiny piece of the stele left, it's difficult to understand its full meaning but there's enough information left to determine that it belonged to a family group. There's also a drawing carved into the fragment, depicting a woman sitting down alongside a young girl and a bearded man. 
Most likely, this is a representation of the family. Experts think there were at least another two or three people on the missing pieces of the stila. The name Dimostratos is etched underneath the drawing. Based on the style of the artwork and the archaeological evidence at the site, it's possible to estimate that the monument was built around 2,400 years ago. It was probably part of the necropolis in front of the sacred gate, but some years later was removed and used as building material for something else. There was a major archaeological breakthrough in Poland in November 2021, when archaeologists discovered what's thought to be the oldest piece of jewelry decorated by humans ever to be found in Eurasia. It's an ivory pendant, and experts think it's around 41,500 years old. The artifact is made from mammoth tusk and is covered in deliberately made puncture marks. The ancient jewelry was discovered broken into two pieces when archaeologists excavated a site deep within Poland's Stajnia Cave. Experts note that the 50 puncture marks on the pendant surface are arranged in a looping curve. We're not sure whether the pattern has any significance, but they've speculated that the holes might be related to the cycles of the sun or the moon. Alternatively, perhaps each hole records a successful animal hunt. The piece comes from a time when modern humans were first beginning to adorn their bodies with jewelry. Scientists and historians have always wondered why our ancestors spontaneously decided to start doing this. And while this discovery doesn't answer that question, it gets us a little closer to the origins of the behavior. The ancient Romans were extremely accomplished aqueduct builders, but not every aqueduct they started building got finished. Here's one they never quite got around to completing. It's in Armenia, and it was found in November 2021. Aside from being incomplete, the structure is notable because it's the easternmost aqueduct of the entire former Roman Empire. What's left of it, or rather what was built of it, was discovered during excavation work at a known Hellenistic site called Artashat Artaxata. Archaeologists at the scene say that the aqueduct bridge was worked on between the years 114 and 117, but they're unable to say why the Romans didn't finish it. What they do know is that the ancient city of Artakchata was scheduled to become the capital of the Roman province in Armenia, but that plan never came to fruition. Making Armenia a Roman province was Emperor Trajan's plan, and he died in the year 117. His successor Hadrian was far less interested in Armenia and gave up on the idea of a province. In doing so, it seems he caused his people to give up on the idea of the aqueduct. The art of making clothes is one of the very oldest in human history, but it had to begin somewhere. Perhaps we can get some insight into its origins by checking out this September 2021 discovery from Karahoyak in Turkey. Archaeologists are already aware that this is an unusual part of the world, because as many as 10,000 people lived here together 9,000 years ago. Settling down permanently wasn't standard behavior during that point in the Stone Age, but these people did, and by doing so, they created the largest known settlement from the Neolithic era. They also left behind a few scraps of textiles and fabrics for us to find. The most controversial of them was discovered in 1962. It's a small scrap of cloth that some experts have suggested might be made of wool or linen. In fact, as of September 2021, we know that it's made of bast fibers. As such, it's the oldest preserved woven fabric in the world. We've long believed that when our ancestors started making clothes rather than wearing animal skins, they used linen as their default material. Based on the age of this fabric, which was created at least 8,500 years ago, it now seems that the first human-made clothes may have been made from bast. Next, we go to the south of Mexico, where a 1,000-year-old Mayan canoe was recently found in a Yucatan cenote in San Andreas. The fact that the boat has spent the past thousand years submerged in a freshwater pool has preserved its wooden frame almost perfectly. The discovery happened not far from the legendary ruined city of Chichen Itza, so it's probably fair to assume that the canoe belonged to one of the city's residents. At five feet long, it was probably designed to carry two or possibly three people at the same time. Perhaps it was a family canoe. 
Fragments of boats like this from the same era have been found before in Belize, Guatemala, and Quintana Roo, but this is the first time one has been discovered still fully intact. This find comes as archaeologists hurriedly dig through an area of Mexico that's been earmarked for a new intercity rapid rail project. The project is not without its controversies, as it involves either building over or destroying land that once belonged to the Maya. But in the short term, it's caused a flurry of discoveries as archaeologists take what they can while they still have time. The Palestinian city of Jericho is the oldest continually occupied settlement in the world. It's a place of ancient wonder, and it's also where you'll find one of the world's largest floor mosaics. The mosaic is inside Hisham's palace, and in October 2021, it was re-revealed to the public after years of repair and restoration work. The mosaic looks almost like an enormous carpet, covering an area of just under 9,000 square feet and containing more than 5 million individual pieces of stone. It was first created during the 8th century. There are countless different images within the artwork, including lions attacking deer as a symbol of war, and two gazelles symbolizing peace. All of the stone used in the mosaic was locally sourced in Palestine. The ancient palace was completely forgotten in Jericho until archaeologists rediscovered it in the late 19th century. And even then, it took until the 1930s to clear away enough dust and debris to reveal the patterned floor. The restoration project, which is understood to have been funded by Japanese well-wishers, cost about $12 million. Shlomi Katzen is an Israeli scuba diver, but in September 2021, he accidentally became a marine archaeologist. Shlomi dived into the sea near Haifa in Israel in the hope of spotting a few tropical fish, but something far larger caught his eye. He dragged his mystery find back to the surface, which wasn't easy given its size and weight, and was shocked to see that he'd found an ancient-looking sword. Professional archaeologists quickly identified Shlomi's lucky find. This sword is about 900 years old and once belonged to a crusader knight. To be more specific, it probably belonged to a crusader knight who was stationed at the crusader citadel at Atlit, not far from Haifa. The crusader sword looks bigger than it is because of the thick coating of mud, silt, and marine life that it's acquired during its many centuries underwater. But even if all that were to be cleaned off, it would still be five feet long. Between that and the fact that the blade is made of iron, it's a wonder that anybody was able to lift it at all. The sword is thought to be fully intact underneath the crusty shell and was sent to professionals for restoration not long after it was discovered. Archaeology can feel like a glamorous job when you're breaking into a treasure-laden tomb, but not so much when you're examining ancient human feces. Someone has to do the dirty work, though, and in October 2021, a team of scientists helped archaeologists to unlock the secrets of a 2,700-year-old block of human waste that was found in the Hallstatt mine, located in the Austrian Alps. The objective was to find out more about the diet of the people who worked in the mines during the Iron Age, and they were successful in that respect. The verdict is that the workers ate a lot of blue cheese and drank a lot of beer. The presence of so much beer came as a big surprise to the experts, who had previously thought that making beer through deliberate fermentation processes was beyond the knowledge of anyone living in Austria at the time. Aside from all that cheese and beer, the feces contained meat proteins, beans, cereals, and fruit. All in all, it sounds like a healthy, balanced diet, and we're not surprised that the workers wanted a beer after a hard day's mining. Norway is a great place to go skiing. People from all over the world visit the country for that very reason. But the locals have been skiing for well over 1,000 years. We know that because of the discovery of a 1,300-year-old wooden ski in the Norwegian ice in July 2021. It appears to be the companion ski to another that was found not far from here in the Diggervarden ice patch in 2014. It's made of the same wood and seems to have been cut at the same time, so it's reasonable to assume they're a pair. They now automatically become the oldest known pair of skis in world history. 
The ice has done such a good job of preserving the skis that they still have their original foot bindings made from leather straps and wooden plugs. The foothold of the more recently discovered ski shows signs of having been repaired several times by its owner, which makes us wonder why it was abandoned in the ice. It wasn't broken, and it had clearly been a very useful possession for a long time. This part of Norway would have been good for reindeer hunting 1,300 years ago, so that might explain why the owner of the skis was here, but not why he apparently left without his footwear. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!